Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. Hello, kings, queens, nerds, and geeks. Powdered Milk here, and welcome to the Stanley Parable. First off, I'd like to announce that I'd like to ask a few questions of you guys. First off, what do you guys think of my channel so far? i just like to know. Second, i also like to know, what do you think of my new intro I've added into uh, my thing now? And another thing i like to ask is, um... Actually, i like to know how you guys' day was. That's all i like to ask. I haven't asked you guys questions like this in a while, like, about you guys. How was your day? Um, what is your favorite food? Stuff like that. I want to know about you guys. It's just something I want to know. And... Also, guys, uh, for those of you who don't know what the Stanley Parable is, um, the Stanley Parable is a choice-based game. Your choices in the game basically decide. And I plan, what I plan to do, is to make different choices and then continue on with the game based on them. Um, also, um, I actually had a switch recording programs because OBS wasn't working with this. So I had a switch to my, um, switch to screen, Enomatic. Uh, so this is gonna be a bit different for me, so here we go. Ooh, a little, a little. Yeah. So here we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how Ooh, long sorry. to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul painting, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Well, and one day something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, this guy says I stepped out of the office. Let's see what happens if I... But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. <laughs> That's cool. badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. I can't let years gone by. He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. What just happened? What I do? Oh, it just gave me a whole new decision. I just completed one of the outcomes, I think. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, uh -huh. he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Who farted? That's what the mug says. Who farted? I like to look around things, try to find... My computer was on for some reason. Maybe there's something about it. Um, this one says... Can't read it because of the graphics. I like what now? Okay. How was if I... Can I mess with this art? Nope. Uh, can I open this door? Okay. What's in here? What is this? Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor awaiting input the story in any way. I don't care what you think, man. Uh, what's this? I like to touch things. I can't open this. Okay, this is actually, uh... Huh. I... I hate Monday's cup. Oh, that's classic. Can't go through there. Can I mess with this painting? No. She's nothing but mugs. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Left. He wants me to go through that door. But, I'm going to go through the opposite door. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. This is kind of like the office in, uh, that my character was in. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Uh, yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even the... But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No. Fuck you. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. What does it say? Do not lie, you're you are lying right now, stop. Huh. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. 
This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. The question is, who is she? That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. No, I'm not gonna pick up the phone. I'm gonna do the exact opposite of everything you say. I don't want to pick it up. No, you can't make me. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Well, let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Practice. Okay, now it's just loading. I have no idea what's going on. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video.
Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision-making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. I can't close it. Okay, now that means there's no choice. See if there's anything I can do. Okay. I'm going to make poor decisions just on you. choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place... So dying is an option! I could have done that! They're really making it hard to make decisions, huh? Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. <laughs> nope, I'm not going to. Nope. I'm going to stay right here. Ah, screw it, let's go. There's nowhere I can go in here, so there's no point standing. Ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? This is the way I knew how to jump. No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. No! No! Whoa! This is really cool.
I have to be honest, this game is pretty freaking cool. Where am I? Oh, I'm, I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Actually, I'm a grown man, so... Story. <laughs> if you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, um, I would continue this, but I'm all out of time. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this awesome video of the Stanley Parable. And guys, if you want to see me make more choices, just tell me, because this game is so awesome. Seriously. Also, guys, tell me some choices that you've made, and I might try them and see how they turn out. Just don't spoil anything. And, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Stay nerdy, my friends. Bye!